Alright guys, I just wanted to make a video to show my league starter here. Uh, it's come a long way, almost, uh, I think I'm actually about level 92 now, and uh, through the 6th Harbringer. And uh, I wanted to show it because it's doing a lot of damage, especially in the early games, early Echoes. It's just absolutely blasting through uh, enemies and bosses. You can see here I'm hitting for about uh, 90 to 100k every now and then. On the Harbingers, that does got down to about 30 to 50, uh, 50k that is, but it's pretty good stuff. So if you're interested in uh, the build, I'm going to get into it, uh, but just very quickly here, I am trying to start streaming. So if you'd like to come watch uh, this build being finished off or some new ones, uh, come check me out. My Twitch is in the description below. So let's get started. All right, so let's begin with the skills here. What I'm going to do is quickly cycle through the skills so that if you do not care about the explanation, you can pause the video, take a screenshot and put in the nodes. Otherwise, I will explain uh, in a couple of seconds here. There we go. All right, so let's begin with puncture. So with puncture, it is unlocked at level five and we want to immediately rush to death's imprint this will give us shadow dagger and before i explain how this works i would also suggest that if you do not have leveling items uh, or in, in other words if this is your first character i do not recommend um leveling with puncture so specialized puncture put it in into this slot uh, as soon as you unlock it and start putting in points, but actually use a different skill because uh, using this as your main attack before death's imprint is really slow. It's, it's, it's quite slow. It's doable, but just very slow. Either way, though, we go into death's imprint. Every four attacks, we will get shadow daggers procced. However, if we use puncture directly, which we will always do, that chance is doubled, so it actually means every two attacks, we are guaranteed to get a proc of daggers. And the daggers scale with both melee and throwing attack, dexterity and physical. But the most important part is that it always critically strikes, meaning that we don't have to get any investment into critical strike, and we can just dump it all into multiplier to get those really big hits. Attack speed is also gonna be important, of course, uh, but not as much as flat damage because we can stack flat melee and flat throwing because the added damage is applied at 340% effectiveness. So this is just a very, very good skill. Outside of that, after going to Shadow Daggers here, we go to the left side. And I've decided to go with a more kind of a balanced approach to this. I'm losing a lot of bleed damage over time because I've taken mutilate, mutilate, excuse me, mutilate. What this does is that on the third attack of puncture, it will consume all of my bleed stacks and it will give me 10 health per stack. So with my current gear and setup, I'm getting about 200 to 300 health um, every third attack. So it's, it's quite decent. Uh, I'm going to show myself doing a uh, harbinger in the end and you'll see that it actually keeps me alive um, fairly decently but that's what I've decided to go with uh, if you want more damage you could take this off don't don't go into mutilate and go into more uh, uh, bloodthirst or just flat perforate here I would probably choose uh, bloodthirst since bloodthirst uh, gives us bland, uh, bleeding fury, excuse me, and bleeding fury can stack up to six times with the hunger passive, and it, it is uh, increased bleed chance per stack. So it's just very good. Moving on, we're gonna go to smoke bomb. Here we take a mix of damage and utility. On the right side, we go into silver shroud stacks. Whenever we are inside of the smoke bomb, we get plus three. And we are guaranteed to dodge the next attack after using this, meaning that you can use this uh, to avoid big hits on bosses. And not only do you avoid it, but you also get ward. We can also get cleanse, cleanse ailments. This is very useful inside of Echoes uh, in the monolith. Whenever you get 10 or 
maybe even more poison stacks, you can cleanse them with the bomb. On the left side of the tree, we go into duration and smoke blades. This gives me melee damage and throwing damage. So that's a flat plus 40 because if you remember, shadow daggers scale with both. So that's a plus 40. And whenever I'm inside this smoke bomb, this damage ramps up to about 60k. So that's 55, 62, almost 70k. Yeah, almost 70k. And we still have more buffs coming out from our passives later on, which I will show. So being inside of the cloud gives us a massive, massive boost. You have to take smoke blades. Going on to shift here, uh, on the left, top left side, we go into healing, we get healing per dex, we get a potential death save. So if a single hit, and that's very important, a single hit takes me to 50%, shift will reset on a 10 second cooldown, and I can, of course, shift again and hopefully get a heal uh, that keeps me alive or cleanses my ailments if you look here. I have molting cleanses ailments. Similarly, we go into shadow slip, we can get invulnerability while shifting. This is very useful for things like uh, lag on's beam. You can just shift right through it. Uh, you won't take any damage if you're doing it correctly and not just exploiting, which I always do. So <laughs> feel free to do that too. Uh, it, going to the top, this is actually very important. On the We go to the top left for kill threshold. Um, what this will do is allow us to kill pretty much anything at 16%. Um, this will work on Harbingers as well, so you don't have to just completely kill them. Uh, sometimes I actually don't get this off because I just go right through from 16 to 4%, but either way, it's nice to have. At the bottom, uh, excuse me, on the right side here, this is bait. So if you notice here, this is Shadow Daggers, Unseen Strike has a chance to inflict Shadow Dagger to enemies. Unseen Strike just means uh, uh, this one right here. You deal damage whenever you shift. The reason why this is bait is because if you put two points into this, it has a 100% chance to put one stack of Shadow Daggers. But if you, if you remember, you need four. Meaning that if I shift, I put one stack, but I still need another three and we get two per attack. So no matter what, I have to still attack twice. So this is just a waste of points. Uh, don't take this. Don't, don't take this with the puncture build. Uh, it still ends up being uh, two attacks regardless of whether you put a, a, an extra shadow uh, dagger with shift. It's just bait. Going into falconry here. With the falcon, we are using it as well as another kill threshold uh, ability so we can execute uh, bosses, but also a self buff. So the Falcon use, can use Falcon Strikes. Whenever the Falcon hits an enemy with Falcon Strikes, it marks them. And whenever we hit someone with Falcon Strikes, we consume the mark and deal plus 150% damage. Incredible. Also, whenever we consume a mark, we gain a buff, movement speed buff, which with our passives will become attack damage buff and we get attack speed as well. We go into marking strikes for more uh, chance to inflict a falconer's mark. On the bottom left here, we go into falcon damage just to help us uh, get that execution a bit faster. So for example, if the boss is at 18% or 19%, you can use falcon strikes and uh, there's a good chance you'll kill it uh, thanks to this damage because Falcon damage plus 15% tripled for Falcon strikes. Pretty damn nice. We also buff our Falcon with our own damage at 75% um, ratio here. Moving on to Explosive Trap. This is optional. You don't actually need this. However, I highly, highly recommend that you do for this node alone right here. So, uh, and actually it's, it's more of a combo right here, a, a bit of a synergy. On the left side, we go into hold this. What this does is that whenever we attack uh, with a melee attack, it will attach a trap. And since we're always melee attacking, we can attach a trap every 1.5 seconds. Uh, that's just the normal um, 
timing here. And once that explodes, it will proc Lofting Bird whenever one of your explosive straps detonates. Your Falcon skills recover a potion of the remaining cooldowns, meaning that we can use Falcon Strikes faster. It's 3%, but we can buff that by going into Trap Sprinkler, meaning that if we attach a, a, a trap, it explodes, it has a 100% chance because we go into Trap Sprinkler and automated bombardment, it has a 100% chance to throw another trap. So, so it's, uh, it's very good. Now, one thing here that's quite interesting is that it does increase the mana cost, but for some reason, I don't know if this is a bug or intended, as long as we do not directly cast it, which we never do, the mana cost never actually gets expended. Uh, don't know why, but there it is. And, and so this 3% will get uh, constantly procced by the extra traps that we are throwing, especially in Echoes. So that's why we go into Explosive Traps. Everything else here is just uh, a little bit more damage and area of effect um, and instant detonation on fast enemies if they're moving. So that's pretty much it. We're going to move on to the items. Alrighty, so let's talk about the items items now there are actually two unique items that you should have i only have one of them because i cannot be bothered with arena and on the ring slot there is a unique ring that is specific for uh shadow clones and shadow daggers however as i said it only drops from arena it will give you physical penetration as well as crit multiplier uh which is all just very good. It's really, really good. Uh, those are one of the most important ones for uh, Shadow Daggers. So you should get it if you can handle Arena. The second one is actually not even a rogue item. This is a Javelin Spear. But this base, the, the Trident, is perfect for Shadow Daggers since it has melee damage and melee critical strike multiplier. But this unique also comes with physical penetration, flat melee physical damage, and dexterity, which is everything that we need apart from throwing damage, which you can't get on, on spears, to essentially giga buff our shadow daggers. And if you notice, I'm going to show you here, this is uh, a non-unique version, has plus 80 as well, and... This one rolled 117, but it can go up to 180 as well. Um, something like this with 108 critical strike multiplier, the crit chance unfortunately is wasted here. So something like this one would be better that has a uh, flat melee. And bleed chance of course is good and shared physical penetration. So if you can get a spear that looks like this and swap out the critical strike chance with flat melee, then you could swap these two, right? But Serpine's Fractal Tree is pretty much best in slot. Unfortunately, this only drops from Exile Mages, it seems. I have tried chancing it. I have tried Prophecies. I have not been able to get one uh, to, to put LP on it. It's just uh, I haven't dropped one in like 40 levels. It's crazy. So it seems to be quite rare. Either way, though, when it comes to other stats, as you have probably guessed, we want to go melee damage and melee critical strike and throwing damage. Those three are pretty much what you want. So on my ring, I have it here, plus, 30, uh, plus 12, excuse me, on my uh, relic, plus 18, a bit of attack speed as well on the ring and on the amulet. Um, everything else is completely optional, up to you what you want to do if you want to go full uh, glass cannon then just keep stacking uh, critical multiplier and flat damage if you want to survive get hp i made that mistake uh, i have 1k health i don't have nearly enough hp and i do get one shot every now and then by a uh, random mobs so if you don't want that to happen get hp when it comes to idols uh, there is a specific idol for shadow daggers plus plus percentage to physical penetration with shadow daggers. That's going to be very, very good for you. 
Um, I only have one put in here simply because I need everything else to stay alive. As I said, if you don't care about dying every now and then, then you can go more glass cannon. Except for that, that's going to be it for the items. Very simple stuff, right? The quick and dirty base melee and throwing critical strike multi and physical penetration with shadow daggers or just flat physical pen. All right, let's move on to the passives. All right, so let's go into the passives here. I'm going to do the same and just quickly show the screen so that if you don't care about the explanation, you can take a screenshot, pause the video and uh, put in the notes. There they are. Oh, uh, one last thing. I'm not finished here. I would go into Veil vale of Night fully. Uh, I just don't have the levels quite yet. But for the explanation in the Rogue Tree, very simple stuff. We just go into attack speed and flat melee. We do take agility as fast as possible. It will grant us haste on hit chance and increased damage 1 to 1 to movement speed. So 30% uh, movement speed from haste will equal 30% increased damage multiplier. It's very good. We do go into Glancing Blow. We will be converting our block chance. Whatever little block chance we get, we will convert into Glancing Blow. And that's pretty much it. We go into the... Actually, initially I went into Falconer first but uh, and went in fully into it. However, what I would recommend in retrospect is to rush into Outlander's Tenacity which will convert 15% of your maximum health as endurance threshold, which is quite nice for keeping you alive in the early game. And then go into uh, the Blade Dancer, Cloak of Shadows, we'll get just five so that we can get into this right here. Skia Synthesis. The health on shadow creation and shadow damage is kind of wasted with the way that I have set up my skills. However, four point bonus, Shadow Daggers, damage to rare and bosses, plus 50%. This is incredible. This is how I can hit 90 to 100k every now and then. Uh, so get this as quickly as possible. But going back to the Falconer, uh, we go into Outlander's Tenacity and Expert Duelist. Expert Duelist will give us just 40, 49% increased damage with melee weapons, two-handed melee weapons, and one... <laughs> one extra damage uh, per 10 dexterity. Not a lot, but it's a little bit extra. Mostly we want it for the multiplier. And to get into sharpest point with five points, we can get uh, some increased damage with spears and bleach chance, as well as range with puncture. This allows me to attack from actually quite a decent, uh, quite a decent uh, range so that I can stay a bit safer. From there, as I mentioned earlier, we go into block chance and we convert our block chance into glancing blow at 100% efficiency. And then we double it whenever we have not been hit. That means we do have to get some dodge. Okay. Then I make the Falcon abilities instant cast. This is just quality of life. Go into evasion tactics for a little bit extra dexterity as well as armor and dodge and finish it off with extra armor per dexterity and increased armor percentage when the Falcon hits something. I would also go into finesse them. I haven't because I decided to prioritize Blade Dancer nodes, but this will give you crit avoidance, a tiny amount of, of health on crit, and uh, probably just go five points into that. But I went fully into Tailwind since it gives me movement speed, which again translates to damage and dodge rating, and it's doubled with a recent Falcon hit, which is going to be pretty much always. Finishing off Blade Dancer, as I said earlier, Cloak of Shadows, five points so that we can get into Sky Synthesis. Once is okay, we have flat melee physical damage and throwing physical damage. I might even come back and put eight points here because that's a lot. That's quite a lot of flat damage. We only take one point into Shroud of Dusk because I rather have Veil vale of Night. This has a chance to grant us Dusk Shroud whenever we use a melee attack and hit at least one enemy, which is going to be pretty much always. 
So this is just very good. And of course, melee attack speed. So this is pretty good. But that's going to be it for the passives. And pretty much for the explanation of the build. So I'm going to finish it off with putting in uh, me doing a harbinger. And you can see um, what it looks like. And um, if you enjoyed this, thanks for watching. Peace.